or Nakin is legally blind, confined to a wheelchair with cerebral palsy. Even though she's 34 years old, this Jacksonville, Florida resident cannot do much alone. You need help with everything from yes, from getting up, getting up to eat, um, to preparing meals, to going out in the community. I need help. I would say almost 24/7. And yet, for more than a month, Aiken says she was alone overnight after the state of Florida revoked her essential Medicaid coverage. It was pure panic because I'm like, what the heck happened? During the pandemic, the federal government required states to keep providing health care coverage to Medicaid recipients, even if they lost their eligibility. Then the public health emergency went away and eligibility rules came back last year for the program that's supposed to help low income and disabled Americans. Since then, more than 25 million people have lost coverage during what's been dubbed the unwinding of Medicaid. And according to a health policy research group, roughly 70% of those who lost coverage did so because of procedural reasons like paperwork issues, though some may genuinely not qualify anymore. You have anything? I have mail for you. Okay. Kimberly Bryant helps lead Aiken's care team. She says Aiken received digital notices that were not sent to her care coordinators. Even if she did find this online, would she have been able to read this? No. She can't see that because she's legally blind. Many patient advocates say Florida's unwinding has been particularly sloppy. And it's caused me a lot of stress. They estimate thousands of disabled people, like Lauren, are being impacted in that state alone. And now plaintiffs in a class action lawsuit allege the state has violated the constitutional rights of tens of thousands of Floridians, ending coverage without adequate notice and with little or no explanation of the actual reason. We repeatedly asked Florida officials for comment, which they never gave. So we went to a press conference to ask Governor Ron DeSantis why people who should have Medicaid lost coverage. I'm not sure that's true. The secretary of the Florida Department of Children and Families stepped in to say this. We're committed to ensuring that anyone who is eligible maintains coverage. We do have an appointment Friday. But without coverage, Bryant says she took out personal loans to pay Aiken's care team. A little bit over 12000 now. $12,000? Yes. Of your money? My money. Why would you put out $12,000 for someone it, you have only known months? I guess because if it was me, um, I would want somebody to care. I couldn't walk away. Late last week, Lauren Aiken's care team says her coverage was restored. It took almost three months and a team of people helping her. Meanwhile, Aiken says she's lost faith in the system that's supposed to help her live life to the fullest. If it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. Jesse Kirsch, NBC News, Jacksonville, Florida. And see, that's disgusting, isn't it? You know, you have all of these people that you see online that claim to be some messenger of the Lord, that they claim that they've got words for everybody and everything. But you, one thing you notice about these people, they don't give a darn about the less fortunate nor the poor and those that are struggling out here in society. All they're looking for is some type of people that they can single out and that they can bash and degrade and make fun of and do everything else. And these, type, th these are the situations that burns me up. When you have the church that is, as we talk about, Total disarray. They don't care. Church of Laodicea, as, as, as it talks about in the book of Revelation, the, the, the church where it's just, it's supposed to be doing great deeds and things within the communities. And churches are so busy trying to have building extension programs, uh, uh, having little uh, 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 events to uplift themselves and things like that, but not doing anything to really make a difference in the community. Now, there is some churches out there that's doing it, but it's far and few. And unfortunately, what you see online with a lot of these so-called messengers and self-appointed prophets and all of these people we talk about, these people don't give a darn about you. They don't give a darn about nobody. You know, if you, one thing I noticed with a lot of these people, and you may have noticed, that this, think of this, these people, I see in the comments a lot of times people ask questions to these so-called messengers of the Lord. 
and they'll ask questions and, and, and put it in the comments and it'll be all kind of questions and you don't even see no response 99% of the time from these folks. You know, and, and every now and then you may see something that pops in there where someone say, can you please pray for me or something like that or whatever, whatever. Uh, uh, but the times that they do respond, sometimes it's the, it's the uh, counter an attack, uh, a response to something that they didn't like. And then that's what they do. They'll come back with their little counter attack. And that's the only response they get. When you have hearts where you can give a person a heart or to recognize that you heard their message, that you liked their comment or things like that. Now, if you have a huge channel, my channel's not big, but if you got a channel with hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of subscribers and things, that can be difficult. You can't answer everybody. But what you can do is get a moderator. There's people that do moderate. You can have family, friends, somebody, or I, you, there's probably someone you can pay part-time to do moderation of your channel so that they can go in and they can't answer everybody, but they can do something because there's plenty of channels that do that. So just think of that for a moment. If they don't give a darn and you're the subscriber, you've been following them for years and, and, and you've had questions, you've reached out, they never respond. They never say anything and acknowledge nothing. That should tell you something. That should tell you something about the person. Many of you, you know me, I try to respond to you if I get to it. You know, sometimes it's YouTube, you know how crazy it acts. It hides comments, uh, the algorithm, if there's a wrong word in there or something, it, the comment gets hidden. I've got another app to where sometimes I can see comments that show up within the other app uh, uh, away from YouTube but it's not guaranteed all the time. So forgive me, you know, if, I, if you've written something and maybe I didn't see, but most of the time, you, those of you know me that's been following me for a while, I'm gonna try to respond. I, I, I like interaction. I wanna hear you guys' thoughts. I'm concerned when you say you have something going on. I mean, I'm genuinely concerned, but this is the thing you notice with these people, they don't never say nothing. All is always about them. I mean, they'll set up there and pump videos out, some of them two, three days a week. I mean, two, three day, uh, times out of the day. I mean, I mean, that's what I meant to say, several times and things like that. And, and you'll comment and you'll say little things and they'll just flat out blow you off. These are the types of people, just like that lady, unfortunately, that has going through, you talking about millions of people in society that is being mistreated like this by a lot of folks. And, and, you know, and as we take it to a, a, a look at it from the uh, political realm, a lot of these governors and these people that are over these programs and things, they profess to be a believer in faith. They always talk about family values. They always talk about Christ. They always talk about this or that. You'll see some of them, they have little crosses on their neck. You'll see all of these things. But you see, this is, well, you see how they treat people? This woman is just one of millions that is going through things like that, and it's a shame. And I thought of this verse right here. There's several verses as it pertains to the poor and those that are just pushed aside in society. But, you know, I was just thinking of in Jesus, you know, here in Matthew 25, verses 42 through 46, where he says, For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, As surely I say to you, insomuch as did, uh, you did not do it as to the least of the one, uh, do it in, un, unto uh, one of the least of these, and, and you, did, did, uh, you did not do it unto me. I'm tongue twister here. And, th and these will go away in everlasting punishment, but the righteous shall uh, inherit, inherit eternal life. You know, it's a thing. You know, there, there's a verse that I, I always talk, uh, such a blessing verse. I think it's a Proverbs. He who lends to the Lord. Uh, who, he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. And the Lord does repay what he borrowed. I mean, that lets us know, you know, that scripture, when I first heard that many years ago, that lets us know 
how much the Lord cares about the less fortunate within society. It lets us, lets us know that they are special to him. And how dare church folks to set up and run ministries and actually have churches, people that will run churches and these types of that and think that their work is done because they stand up there and they think that they can just get away with only preaching the word of God. Or they think that they can sit there and have a barbecue on a Saturday and call it that that's it. There's all types of ministry and all types of programs and certain things to do as we talk about in this channel. Yeah, as we talk about, you know, where they always want to bash those in society that are just, that are down and out. Down, I mean, bash an immigrant. I mean, can you blame a person? I'm not saying that, they, you know, everybody, has, you know, just free flow or whatever, whatever. But why do you have to demonize the person? My goodness. You know, I mean, all of us, some of us try to escape cities because we know that our city, I got a coworker that's from West Virginia. And he said, West Virginia is a hell hole. And he had to leave and he ain't never going back. And that's right here in the States because it's just no jobs. It's poor where he was at. There was no, uh, 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 what is that, plumbing and all types of crazy, you know, things like that in this uh, modern era that the uh, things that people get to enjoy, he didn't have. And he's fortunate to be within the city, better city limits and things like that. So people are just, you know, but the Lord cares. He cares about everybody. And whether you like it or not, he cares about all of those people that church folks that have pushed aside, that have demonized the single mother that's then had a, a divorce, the, the teenager or the mother or, or that, that had a child out of wedlock, the, 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 the father that has gotten himself in trouble and been released from prison and can't hold a job and, and, and he's coming to church or you see him all the time and he's got the same clothes on. And, 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 and your neighbor, you know, that, that's sitting there and you're wondering, like, why did things look the way that it is going on and things? Not knowing that they're just one paycheck away from it all falling apart for them because they've been struggling all their life. I mean, we can go on and on and on. But the Lord loves these people. And this is, you know, is we've got to do a better job as Christians and as a church and as a society in taking care of folks. You can't, but you know, as far as spiritually and, and whatever else we can, you know, the church I go to, uh, they have a lot of ministries that go on. I mean, which I was very impressed. Uh, 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 they utilize everybody's talents within the church, whether it's a dentist. Uh, uh, I mean, they do the oil changes. For single mothers, they, they've they got, you know, uh, we, we have a large Somalian community here, so they have English classes for these people. Um, I mean, you name it, there's a lot going on. And then we have a mission, you know, that you can, uh, every Sunday or however, or when you want to, to donate, because those that feel that they're called out to the mission field, do we have a ministry just specifically for that to help launch these people off that are going to be giving up a whole lot to go do that. I mean, you name it. But, you know, most churches have inadequate ministries. You have these ministries that you see online. Somehow they're telling you about a Hollywood star or a singer or some politician and all of these different things. As I mean, when you got all of these people, that are out here in society that needs all kind of help spiritually, materially, everything else. How, I mean, you see how twisted it is? But that's okay. The Lord is watching and he's going to sit there and deal with everybody that is trying to hide behind the mask of Christianity and pretending like they're doing the work for him. And he's going to rip it off as we talked about. And we're going to continue to expose them and talk about the issues the church run away from. Take the devil head on. Punch him right in between the chops. Evangelism for God is the channel. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.